What up, what up, Salvador Brandon here. Welcome back to the Crowdfunding Demystified YouTube channel. On this channel, we talk about crowdfunding, Kickstarter, Indiegogo, Patreon, et cetera. Really how to get you more cash for what you love doing, which is your creative work. How do you monetize it? How do you get out there and really have that impact the world? And the one way that I think that is the most reliable way to ensure that you do it for the long time is a recurring source of income. And that's what we're talking about today is how do you actually monetize your podcast using one of the greatest tools out there, Patreon. Okay, so I wanna go through a couple of quick tips, right, when it comes to monetizing your podcast using Patreon, and kind of a guide, basically, for getting started. So some of the different steps that you should be taking, the way you should be thinking about that, you're gonna find that and more on this video. My name is Salvador Brigman. I've been in this industry since 2012, educating about crowdfunding with my podcast, with my books, my courses, my YouTube videos, um, all those kinds of things, my blog, crowdcrush.com. Um, I've really been trying to deliver great information for you so you can take action on this and we can have more people that are cashing in on their passion that they're really making their passion and turning that into profit. They're taking that passion and they're turning it into profit. So first of all, let's talk about monetizing your podcast. So monetization of any podcast can start small. It can literally start if you just got started recently. And actually, if you don't even have a podcast, I have a great course out there on podcasting, which I'll link you down below. Start free when it comes to starting your podcast. However, if you already have a show, if you want to perfect your voice, I'm going to talk about that as well a little bit in this video. So first of all, monetizing your podcast, right? It all starts with one thing, which is your audience, okay? If you do not yet have an audience for your show, this can be a tiny bit problematic because Patreon, which we'll be talking about on this video, is really more so hand in hand with having an audience. So if you don't yet have an audience, you should definitely check out my free course on podcasting, which shows you how to grow your audience, right? You gotta make sure you have an audience really to begin to take advantage of some of the things that I'm going to be talking about. Now, even if you have a micro, tiny, teeny audience, that is okay. You just need some kind of an audience. So it starts with your audience. First of all, I want you to ask why. Why is it that people are tuning in? Why is it that people are listening to you? Why, 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 why? The more that you can narrow in on that, let's just say, for example, you run a show where you're talking about latest gossip or something like that. Maybe people tune in because they want to get access to cutting edge news before anyone else. Maybe they love the style in which you talk about this and they want more content directly from you. Maybe they want advice of some kind when it comes to love or relationships in their life. You need to discover why people are listening to you. So there are different ways you can do this. You can start, first of all, look at the stats, right? Go look at the actual stats for your show. You can easily send a survey using Google surveys or Typeform or whatever you want to use, but you got to discover why people are listening to your show, what's keeping them around. I think a great one is to allow the audience to call in. If you want to, there are different tools that you can use to have the audience call in. And you can start actually just talk with listeners and understand why they love your show. So once you begin to develop the why, that will allow you to begin to move into the next stage. So typically for entertainment style podcasts, this might be that people love the emotional experience of your show. So they want more comedy, right? They want more interesting stories. They want to feel curious. Entertaining style podcasts are all related to emotions. Informational style podcasts are all related to knowledge, answering questions, solving problems. The way that my podcast helps you, right, when it comes to raising money with crowdfunding. So you have to decide between the entertainment style podcast or the informational style podcast because they're kind of guide your choices next. Number two, once you know your audience and understand their why, is ask, what do they value? Where is the value? in your show. Is it, again, the emotional experience? Is it they like hearing your voice? They like being around you, etc. Is it they also, um, you know, really this allows them to kind of live with certain values. For example, like Joe Rogan, right, has certain guests. Maybe those guests relate with your values. Um, maybe this, this is about particular political values, etc. You want to think about where is the value that people get or take away from the actual show? Is it having a great mindset where they feel inspired and excited leading into the next stage in their life, right? Is it that they feel like they have more information and knowledge to be able to execute on certain goals? Think about the value that people take away in their actual day. They're tuning in to you, right? What value are they receiving when they are tuning into you? Because what you're gonna be doing next is sort of designing some different packages that go into kind of extend that experience. Some easy ways to kind of think about the value is that, we're gonna do a different color here, is if you disappeared, how would they feel? 
So let's just say if there was a gap, right? If there was a gap and you disappeared, how would they feel? What would they say? What would they think? Would they be kind of let down? What would they be looking forward to that they're no longer getting access to? And what would they then start looking for when they're trying to discover other new podcasts? What is the gap that they would experience? Number two is how are they already taking action? Are you selling swag? Are you mentioning sponsors? Is any, in any kind of way, they're already taking action. Because if they're willing to take action, it says a lot about the value that they're getting. So maybe if they're wearing a certain type of swag, maybe they really agree with those messages. They really agree with those beliefs. They really agree with those values, right? But that swag is saying. Um, so what is it, the value that they're taking away? Is it identity related, right? Is it problem solving related? What is the value at the end of the day that they are taking away? Number three is we want to design some different, we'll call them levels. You can also call them kits, um, but really at the end of the day, it's a way to extend the experience of these two. So once you have kind of a bit of a better idea of the audience, you have a bit of a better idea of the value that you're taking away, you then want to start to kind of brainstorm, put your head together if you also have some other hosts that you're you know working with, and start to think about how could we extend this experience? What might be some different subscription uh, items or perks or things that they might want to get access to on an ongoing basis in order to extend this value which they are receiving. So for example, you could do live streams, you could give someone a badge of some kind, you can give them recognition, you could play to their identity in that way, you can give them advice, you could allow them to be a part of the actual production process if it's something that they really love in that way. What is it that they like? What is the value that they're getting out of? How can you extend that experience or give them a special experience so they want to become insiders, they want to support your craft, they want to support the mission of the show? Is the value tied very intimately to the mission that you have as a podcast creator? Because people do love to support and be a part of missions that they actually agree with. This will help you to then assemble your actual Patreon page. So once you've done a little bit of your homework here, you know, the first two points, then we can start to talk about Patreon, okay? So with Patreon, um, you know, this is obviously a platform that anyone out there can use. It's based on a, uh, a, it's got a fee model where it's going to be five. I believe it's still around 8%. Um, you have to double check my work there, but it's around 5% to get started. And then depending on how much you know functionality that you want, you can then upgrade your tier. So what this allows you to do is to basically create a fan centric, or I would just say a subscription based crowdfunding campaign where people can recurringly support your podcast. They can support it on a monthly or per creation basis. And in exchange for that $5 a month, $10 a month, $50, $25 a month, they're getting access to more value. Maybe they're getting access to you, they're getting access to live streams, they're getting access to different things that you're putting there in your different Patreon reward tiers, also known as kits. And every single month, they're getting access to that on an ongoing basis. So this can be an incredibly powerful way to kind of create a tight-knit community within this overall podcasting community that you have. And even if that's only a couple of people, and that's only a little bit, it grows over time. The more you mention it on your show, and before you know it, you have a deluge of information and traffic, and everyone is being sent to this one Patreon link, and that's really a great uh, option, I'd say, for you. So first of all, you know, you need to develop these levels, then you can begin to think about starting the Patreon. However, monetization and just having the Patreon isn't enough. You then need to begin to do what I'm about to mention. Number four is that you need to then start to market and promote this okay so we're talking a little bit about marketing slash promo and there is a lot here that i would love to share with you on this concept but before we do let me just kind of give you a couple of examples of other people that are actually crushing it with their patreon so i'm just going to read off a couple of different examples number one true crime accessed Gillian and Patrick are people behind the True Crime Obsessed podcast, which recaps true crime documentaries from a comedic lens. They currently have 50,005 patrons. They have four subscription levels with the least expensive giving patrons access to them, three to four bonus episodes per month, videos of live shows, and more for a monthly donation of $5. So think about that. We talked about the audience, right? They understand the true crime nature. It sounds like the audience also wants access to more bonus episodes, right? To understand more maybe of the crimes that are happening or to understand it in depth. Number two, they obviously want access to being able to see maybe the video actually of people talking, which is kind of a little bit more of a premium production quality in that way. And that's just you know starting obviously with their subscription tiers. 
So they have assessed their audience, they've created some additional value, right, that their audience is gonna be interested in. They put that into their levels, their kits, or their Patreon tiers, and now they have 50,000 people plus supporting them on a recurring basis, which is allowing them to have incredible production value with their podcast. Does that make sense? Number two, the Tim Dillon Show. Comedian Tim Dillon has a weekly podcast after his own name during which he gives listeners a tour of the end of the world. He has two subscription tiers with the least expensive at $5 per month. That gives him 43,440 patrons access to bonus episodes, live show archives, and allows them to submit podcast episode topics. So in this example, that is only two levels, two tiers, two kits, right, that people can subscribe to. And it's for a very affordable $5 a month starting there. Um, so it's, to me, you know, this is a, like a no brainer, obviously, but to have 43,000 people plus an army that's supporting his creative work and also getting access to being able to submit um, a show ideas, which I think is a really cool way to involve fans and also to, you know, live streams and, and these different things. It's a way to involve the fans in the actual experience. So let's talk about number three. Number three is Maintenance Phase. So Michael Hobbs and Aubrey Gordon are the duo behind Maintenance Phase, a podcast aimed at debunking the junk science behind health and wellness fads. While the episodes can be accessed on major podcast platforms, their 36,953 patrons get access to exclusive content and bonus episodes for subscriptions starting at just $3 a month. So they assess their audience exclusive content and some bonus different episodes there sound like what people are interested in. And the cool thing as well is that this is a very entry level tier. That these guys have a massive audience, you know, the ones that we've been mentioning, but you can just kind of imagine how not only does this grow over time, but it can also lead to a sustainable structure where you can have increased production value when it comes to your show and have more, you know, effort that's basically being in to making really great podcasts for your listeners. Want to take all the stress out of fulfilling your Kickstarter rewards? Fulfillrite is the turnkey solution that puts product delivery on autopilot. The top campaigns use this trusted high-tech provider to store, package, and ship their products. Focus on growing your business. Leave shipping to the experts. Don't wait. Get a custom quote from Fulfillrite today. Link in the description. The last one I'm going to mention is Chapo Trap House. So Chapo Trap House is a team behind uh, this podcast that promotes a unique male lifestyle brand. The team has approximately 50, uh, 35,843 patrons and earns over 158,000 per month to produce this podcast. Patrons get access to all their content for a monthly donation of $5 or more. So if you don't even want to uh, think about or necessarily consider uh, how to put together your own Patreon tiers, there are actually different kits available on Patreon that you can literally just choose from. So I would say that if you are a podcaster, you're someone who's interested in monetizing your podcast, you have no excuse not to. And all of these other podcasters are already hopping on this bandwagon because it's a great way to monetize your show at a very affordable rate for your listeners. And again, it's a repeating and recurring model. So this is great if you assess the audience, the value, how you're gonna expand that value. You have a very easy way to do that. And then you really just need to promote, which comes to my next point. I will be so bold as to say that this is really what brings in that money, right? This is really what brings in the cash. This is really what earns you your keep. It's really what enables you to have a business model around podcasting, to quit your nine to five job, to be able to do this for full time, doing what you love. So it pays a lot of difference to really study the promotion when it comes to Patreon campaigns, to understand how to promote crowdfunding campaigns, to be able to promote things on a podcast. There's a lot of things that we can discuss here. So at this point, I'm going to be giving you a couple of different tips and advice what relates to that. But in addition, I put together an entire new course on Patreon. However, it's kind of in preparing for that course, I realized that people wanted something fast, something to go through easily, some of the tricks of the trade leading into a Patreon campaign. And also what some of the people that are already crushing it are doing behind the scenes. So I went out there and I interviewed a ton of people in terms of what is working well for them with their Patreon campaign. In addition, putting together some of the tactics and techniques that are proven to work to get you more patrons, even if you're starting from the goose egg from zero, you have to launch this thing right to make sure you have all the different marketing strategies, all different tools in your war chest to really smash this thing when you go live with this and put this into a very simple to digest guide, easy to breathe through, nothing when it comes to theoretical knowledge, all just hard earned facts that you can use in order to raise more money with your Patreon campaign. So if you're interested, I'm going to link up that guide down below. 
and it's a very small investment in order to get started with that. However, it helps also support the show. We can put out more training and education. And again, I will be also as well announcing a future course to those people that do purchase that guide. So if you want to grab a copy of the guide, if you want to learn how to actually you know, enhance your Patreon, how to raise more money, you've gotten some value, and also we're getting into a little bit more in just a second, go and check out that guide down below. All right, so let's get into promotion, right? So promotion, how are we going to actually promote this Patreon campaign. So the first thing that I'd like you to do is I'd like you to think in stages. Okay, so we're gonna just kind of bring this over here and make a little bit of a side section here, get a little bit messy, right, with my writing. The first thing I want you to do is I really want you to think about this from more of an intellectual perspective. I know it's kind of like boring, right? But I really want you to think about this. What are people getting out of joining your community? What is their experience going to be like? What are the emotions that they're gonna feel? What keeps them up at night, right? Why might they want to get in on this incredible experience of being a part of your Patreon community? Really, what are you delivering? And how can you kind of hype that up just a tiny bit? So what I want you to do is I want you, number one, to create a file that just houses all of that copy information. So we call it marketing copy, right? I run a marketing company. It's called marketing copy. You're gonna put that just all in a simple file. If you want to, you can put it in an Excel spreadsheet or you can put it in a Google doc or whatever. We can put it in a Word doc. You want to get that into some kind of a file. And here's why. All often, way too often, I'd say, I have someone that I'm talking with and they're like, I did some great pro, I had an episode go really well, I got a bunch of patrons, but then I couldn't figure out how to keep it up. The reason why is that a lot of the times when you're talking about the Patreon, you're not using the proven words or formulas or strategies that you've discovered before. You're not repeating that. You're just kind of saying off the cuff, oh yeah, go and check out the, the Patreon, by the way, which has this and that. When you start to actually get more professional and deliberate about this and putting together a file, maybe with just different alterations as well, marketing copy, and treating it in the same way you would as a sponsor who's coming on your show, who gives you what to say, right? You are the one now who is a sponsor, basically. You're the one who's, who's kind of inhabiting that hack. So you want to put together a file that writes out all of that information. What are the benefits? What are the functionality? What are you promising? What are people going to get? Um, how can they get started? Where should they go? All that key information, put that into a file so you can literally just pull that up on your laptop or your iPad very easily, or even your phone when you're on the podcast, and you can just make sure you hit all those major points because sometimes you'll forget the link. Sometimes you'll forget what Google will get when they join. Sometimes you'll forget how easy it is for them to get started, right? And even just a simple different words and phrases related to that can make the difference between a couple of people joining and a massive truckload of people actually soaring and discovering this Patreon campaign. So make sure that you write a file. Number two is you always, 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 always want to make sure not just to promote on your page, or, sorry, on your podcast, but to get people's contact information in some way. So what you want to do is you want to create what's called a lead magnet. Okay, what is a lead magnet? A lead magnet is basically something that you can give away for free in exchange for contact information. Now, contact information could be in the form of phone numbers, it could be in the form of email, it could be in the form of you know Facebook Messenger bot, whatever it is. I usually recommend email just to get started because it's kind of the easiest to begin with. You want to start to build an email list of the show listeners that you have. And the way you do that, because you can't obviously get this data from iTunes or from Spotify, the way you do that is you create a lead magnet. That's something for free, again, that you're giving away. Maybe that's a bonus episode, right? Maybe that's something, a wild bonus episode you guys have filmed and created that reveals something insane that people are gonna love to get access to. And if you wanna get access to that bonus episode, just enter your name and email here, right? And then you send them that bonus episode once they do that. What does that accomplish? That begins to build your email list. So let's just say you don't have the Patreon yet, yet, right? But you wanna be able to announce it to a bunch of your different followers very easily and also track whether or not people are actually joining the list. You also wanna be able to convert and to communicate with those different people that are on your list. So once you've created this email magnet, you're gonna to start to have a, a massive list that you're beginning to grow repeatedly over time. And then you can announce the Patreon to this list or you can continue to you know, put out messages to that list about new shows, et cetera. You're building this following and now you can actually communicate with those people beyond just the podcast. Number three is you want to have synchronized branding. I don't know. I thought of synchronized swimming. <laughs> synchronized branding, right? So what, is, what does that mean? That means basically that it's all about awareness, okay? And I know that 
for those of you out there that are not familiar with marketing and sales, you can kind of come off as very promoty or very spammy or all those different words. But I'll be honest with you, your average human being needs things repeated for them to remember it. I don't even know if you remember my name. You remember my name, right? Salvador Brigham. You need it repeated in order for things to be remembered, just to stick in the human mind. So when it comes to generating awareness, one of the most important things is that you incorporate this link, you incorporate the awareness about your Patreon into all of your branding. So whether that's your website, your Facebook page, your Instagram, et cetera, you wanna incorporate it into your branding because that way all of your audience knows about this campaign. In addition, when they come to your website or they come to your Instagram, they come to your Facebook, they're reminded about the Patreon. And if they were ever thinking of joining, all of a sudden it starts to become more of a thing in their mind when they start to think about you and your podcast. They start to actually assess the value of that. So this is actually occupying real estate in the mind of your potential patrons. The more real estate you occupy, occupy in their mind, the more you'll be on top of mind, it's called, where they will be thinking about it, right, throughout the course of their daily life or when they're listening to you and they'll be considering it, much more likely to consider or at least try it out. So you wanna make sure that you do that when it comes to a branding perspective. But I wanna talk about another thing that I think is really gonna be a great way to kind of blow this up for you. So two more things, and then we're gonna wrap today's video because I am going a little bit long into this video. The first thing is that you wanna have some kind of teaser content, okay? This is so important. Like if I could highlight this, this is so important. Teaser content, okay? Why is teaser content important? The reason why teaser content is important most people are not willing to just buy from the get-go. They're more interested in kind of sampling something first, and if they like it, then it kind of de-risks that decision. So for example, let's just say there's something really interesting that you are releasing in your Patreon community, like a new episode or something behind the scenes or something that crazy that happened on camera. What if you gave them a little bit of a tease when it came to that content, right? And it was something that was an emotional spike or something that was driving tremendous amounts of curiosity, and they just had to find out the answer to that. That's you providing the tease of what they're going to get when they go into your Patreon community. The more you can do that, the more that people are gonna be like, I wanna get access to this, this sounds really cool. If you're just talking about it, if you're like, this is a great community that I'm doing right on Patreon, they may or may not believe you, but if they hear it themselves or they see it themselves, and they have that experience, they are more likely to then believe that because they are experiencing it themselves, right? But they're like, wow, I want to get more access to more of this. It sounds really cool. So make sure you provide teaser content because that's an easy way to get people making that decision to join your community. The last thing that I'm going to be mentioning here, and there's actually like a lot more. I actually wanted to go through like 17 tips, but I know there's a lot uh, here. So I'm going to go here, number five. Um, and so number five, and you know, I was kind of struggling with what I should include next because I know I have limited time with you guys. But um, I guess number five, really what I want to talk about is this concept of social proof, okay? And you can see I'm getting freaking excited about this, man, because I know this is going to change your life. This is going to change the amount of money that you can make from your crafts. It's going to change the amount of revenue that you can generate for your business. It's going to change just the impact that you're making. That's why I'm so excited for you, right? But social proof, this is something that is so freaking key. And you know, I talk about this um, in my book, in the guide that I put together when it comes to Patreon, really how to have Patreon profits uh, at your fingertips. You can go and check out that guide down below. And again, this is just a sample of all that that's in that guide. So social proof is something that will literally determine whether or not people take action when they arrive at your Patreon page. So think about this for a second. They come to the page, right? What are they gonna notice first? You go to other Patreon pages. What do you see? What do you notice? You typically notice, aside from maybe what they're offering, right? Or if there's a, a video there, which I talk about as well, my guide and how to put that together. They also notice how many other people are part of your community. How many posts are you doing? Sometimes the engagement on those posts. People see that. You look at, when you go to a Patreon page, pay attention to where your eyes are going. Where, what is grabbing your attention? This is so important. This is actually a marketing principle that we call social proof, right? So social proof is incredible because what it does is it creates trust, it creates credibility, but it also creates intrigue and interest. 
Uh, a good way to think about this is if you've ever been to, let's just say, um, Central Park in New York. I used to live in New York for many years I'm in Miami now, but I used to live in Central, uh, around Central Park area. And what's great is that when you go to Central Park and you ever see some of those dancers that are kind of there and they're doing like a performance, they have a crowd of people that start to assemble around them. And then they always usher that crowd, hey, come here, right? They're trying to get them to uh, come even closer. And then more crowds of people come. And all of a sudden, you're walking down the street in Central Park and you see a huge crowd and you wonder what's going on there. And you kind of want to poke in and sort of see what's happening. That is social proof and sort of the physical realm. When it comes to Patreon, it's really the number of people that are part of your community, the number of posts that you're putting out, the amount of engagement there that people can actually see visibly. And what it does is it creates trust. Oh, this looks like a thriving community. Two, it shows you're regularly adding to this actual community. So it kind of creates the expectation if they join it, they're going to get some value out of it immediately. And lastly, if all these other people are part of the community and they're paying on a monthly basis, this content must be good, right? So it creates that kind of implicit logical justification and then become a patron with that actual community. So there are a lot of ways in which you can kind of create this. There are a lot of ways in which you can manufacture this. You can even launch the campaign in levels. So you start to get some social proof with your most hardcore fans and then you announce it to your other course. It's kind of like almost like this wave effect, if you will. I talk about a lot of this in my guide Go sure, make sure to check it out down below. I promise you, you're gonna lot, love a lot of these tactics and teachings that I'm including there. I think this thing is gonna be like, you know, wildfire in the way that it grows. I haven't released a guy like this in a really long time. And it's just because I wanna get something out there fast. I want it to be practical for you. I don't want it to be any kind of fluff. I also want it to be include those people that are already successful, right, with their Patreon campaigns for them to actually just tell you exactly what you should do. And as well as some of the tried and true principles that are proven to get you funding when it comes to your Patreon. So go check that out down below. But again, my name is Salvador Brigman. I hope that you took some value away when it comes to your audience, right? The value you need to create, levels and kits, promo, the things that go into actual marketing, how to actually as well survey your audience, get stats, all the kind of stuff we went over today. I hope you took away a lot of value. Give me a thumbs up on this video if you did. Thank you so much for joining me. My name is Sal and I will see you next time.